I just wanted to show you one last close-up of my bullet molds. This is the 45 after casting 10, 10 bullets in succession. The, the mold itself is in excellent shape. Uh, unless you uh, look closely, you can see my hollow pointing, the shaft of the hollow point. Where is that? This right here, it's, it's completely off center, so it screwed up my whole bullets. Uh, but it didn't matter to me. I, I was just testing it to see how it would hold up since it was a larger volume of lead being used. And uh, oddly enough, it turned out better than the nine millimeters. I mean, I got no discernible uh, erosion on it in the other places that I gotten before, uh, which was, uh, where is it? Along this inside edge, the sharp edges, because I was able to file down the surfaces flat so they would mate perfectly. Uh, I didn't get the kind of erosion I got last time uh, with the nine millimeters. So in that respect, it turned out good. Uh, Here's the, look at the, the mouths of these bullets here. See how it's thicker on one side than on the other side? That's what I mean by it being uh, out of round. I mean, when I when I uh, reamed out the, the hole for this, I, I cocked it so it wasn't perfectly straight, uh, symmetrical up and down. So that was the reason for that. Uh, on the, I cast a total of nine 45 caliber bullets. And although they filled out well, uh, they were off center because of that pin. Um, other than that, man, I got good good dimensions, good usable dimensions. Um, perfectly, uh, nah, that's a lie. Not perfectly. Way better symmetrically round than the nine millimeters were the last time around. And I used the numbers for the nine millimeter tweaks to uh, model this 45 caliber bullet. And uh, it actually seemed to work out well. The average diameter all the way around when I put my calipers to it is something like 356, 356.5, 356.7. Uh, naturally, at the, the high spots are the seams, but uh, those will be ironed out when you push them through the sizing die. But uh, unfortunately, overall, what I got after casting 10 bullets with this was only five usable bullets. And uh, these down here. Uh, these are these are uh, not usable because the first and the second bullet kind of turned out wonky, didn't completely fill out perfectly smooth. Um, it just takes the mold getting up to a certain temperature before it'll start to print or cast some decent bullets. Okay, so uh, that's that's to be expected. It's just I got to figure out a way to warm these molds up to a certain temperature and then start casting. And I think I'll be okay. In fact, I, I'm more than just thinking it. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, that'll iron out that problem. Uh, now, as far as the nine millimeters were concerned, okay, this is the same model on this nine millimeter as I used on the last one. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to zoom in so I can point out some areas that I had problems with. Before it was these inside edges that were giving me problems with erosion. And that was because I had a gap on the faces of each each mold half. That's been taken care of, and I had no more problems with the with the edges uh, eroding. It was the top edge, the, along the top edge of the mouth of the the mold cavity that that started eroding, and uh, that was because I have to uh, make some adjustments to my mold lid so that it rests flat, perfectly flat on here, so as not to allow any lead flashing to end up in between the underside of the lid and the top side of the mold and that will solve that problem but beyond that that's as far in as I can zoom uh, I got the same uh, basic uh, symptoms with this you know we're in one half of the mold this it'll be the bottom half would begin to develop these horizontal erosion striation and the other half was was like pristine I mean the walls are pristine they look kind of yellowish now and uh, but you know when the heat gets to them and it stays on there for a long enough time it, the surface of the mold just starts to yellow but it doesn't start to crack or anything like that now on the bottom one it did start to crack and by crack I mean the, the very surface of it started developing these side-to-side -side striations if I would have kept casting with this one it would have started cracking 
uh, for sure. But uh, to sum up on this one, the top edges, the sharp, sharp top edges of the mouth of the cavities, those are the weak points on this particular setup. And uh, that can be fixed by me uh, fixing the dimensions on the top of this and the underside of the, the sprue cutter lid. Okay, this is the hollow point. Let's see if I can zoom any closer to that. This one actually held up well. I don't know why the other one started uh, exhibiting those striations. Uh, when something like that happens, I just rack my brain trying to figure out what the hell could have happened there. And uh, it's possible that uh, during the print process that I wasn't getting a good enough mix of, of uh, resin and porcelain. And uh, maybe there was a weak, you know, a weak link there. Uh, I'm trying to zoom in on this bottom one. See the chips along the top edge of the mouth of this? Okay, that happens because I got lead in between the top of the mold and the underside of the lid. And when I spun that lid to cut that sprue off, it just chipped the crap out of the top edges of that. I hope you're not getting dizzy just watching this, but uh, sorry, that's the closest I can get. Now, on the hollow point mold, I cast a total of uh, what? Here it is over here. See if I can make you throw up while you're watching this. Yeah. I cast a total of, uh, I thought I cast 10 bullets. I think the other one's inside, but anyways, only three of them out of the 10 would I consider usable, okay? Uh, something else with the nine millimeter bullets. Although they filled out well and the bases, the bases of the bullets gave me good surface finishes, good diameter. Uh, this upper band here that my thumbnail is, is above, okay? That one is supposed to be the same diameter as the base of the bullet, and it was way smaller. And by way smaller, I mean like a, a couple of uh, thousandths less. It's supposed to be, uh, I had a model at 0 0.3560. It came out to 0 0.353 or something like that. Um, I think that my next and last mold that I'll cast in 9mm will be like, like the 45 caliber. It will be of the powder coat version which has no no lands or no uh, grooves for a uh, sorry about the the wonky video here there see how the bottom base of the 45 on the left is just solid cylindrical from top to mid midway on the bullet the nine millimeter bullet that i'll do next will be the same design it will be a powder coat design okay and uh Let's see, back to the uh, hollow pointed 9mm. On this one, I, I also cast, I think it was 10 bullets. I got two of them inside the house. I tried to run them through my sizing die, and they were, they were too small to run through the sizing die. It just fell right through. Anyways, I got four good usable bullets out of this hollow pointed mold, and uh, the remainder were not usable. And keep in mind that the first two or three casts that I made with each mold, those are the ones that generally don't come out well. Even when they come out well, uh, I'll usually go back and, and cull all the bullets that I cast and choose only the good ones and throw the rest back into the melting pot. And uh, it's not like I need any more bullets. I mean, I got a shitload of them. I, this is just an experiment to see if I could actually 3D print my own bullet molds and cast with them successfully. Uh, I have cast with them successfully on four occasions already. And by successfully, I mean my molds held up more than once, more than just one bullet, more than just two bullets. I could have kept going with a 45 uh, bullet mold. And I could have kept going with the 9 millimeter bullet mold, but what was the point? I mean, uh, after, uh, what, 10 of them, I started getting the chipping along the top, so I'd just be casting bullets that I couldn't use. So, uh, um Right up above it, let me show you something else, are the bullets that I cast with my metal uh, bullet molds. And uh, I got a ton of them, man. I mean, it's not like I need more bullets. These are Lyman Devastator bullets. They're also cast with a single cavity mold. Okay, this is a store-bought mold. And at last, last count, I think the mold that casts this costs like $89. Okay. And the last... 
three weeks, I 3D printed six molds, and it cost me a total of like, what, $5, something like that. Over here are some more 45 caliber bullets. These are powder coated, okay? Uh, that's why they uh, are these colors. When you powder coat them, uh, it gives the bullets more lubricity so they fly down the barrel without you having to put a uh, bullet lube on them. Uh, but anyways, I got a ton of those, so I, I don't need bullets. I just need to know that I can print my own bullet molds whenever I want. Now that I got the dimensions down, I know how to mix my resin so it'll resist the heat. Um, to be sure, there's still some tweaks that I have to make. And one tweak for sure that I'll make is tightening the fit between the top of the lid. Where is that now? The top the bottom of the lid to the top of the, the mold. That needs to be tight as I can get it. And uh, it, that may seem like an easy task, but it, it's really not that easy because this, this porcelain, uh, this resin when it's cured, it has no lubricity. So if it's super tight, like I would love for it to be, then it can get hard to spin around. Okay, so there I have to get it just tight enough for the lead not to be, getting in between the, the lid and the and the top of the mold but not so tight that uh, I can't spin that and cut it cut the sprue off uh, anyways that's that's it there um, I I got another bottle of the same resin coming in the mail and uh, I'm gonna print one last batch of molds with it now that I think I got the I got the uh, dimensions down um, I did notice that uh, Let's see, I followed my previous protocols and I, I also tried setting them flat on the table to mitigate this erosion on one side and not on the other. But uh, that didn't seem to do anything, so that was just a, a waste of time in my opinion. And it just kept me from, from getting into a flow of, of casting one after the other. And I think that flow, not being in that flow, kind of uh, allowed the molds to cool in between casts, which uh, is what uh, eventually caused the uh, the failure to, to give me the the exact oh man what are the words I'm looking for the, the the defined surfaces that I got last time, even with the molds as screwed up as they were, were way better than I got this time. Okay, um, next time around, what I'm going to be doing, like I said, is I'm going to be making the nine millimeter bullets. The same design as this this is the 45 it will have no grease grooves in it it'll just be a cylindrical bullet like this okay and uh i am still going to make it hollow pointed though um just to bring the weight of the bullet down i believe those those 45 caliber bullets were designed to come out at 234 grains uh i like kind of shooting less less heavy bullets um like the these here are 180 grain yeah that's the kind of bullets i like to shoot okay so um yeah anyways uh let me know what you think i got one more batch to make and this project will be done and i will consider it a success because i've done everything that i said i was going to do and uh and i've proven it to everybody uh the fact that i'm get not getting absolutely perfect bullets the first time out uh that means nothing to me my main goal was to prove that it, it could be done. I could cast bullets with 3D printed molds. Okay, that's it, man. Let me know what you think.